And thank you also to all previous speakers who, from whom I've learned so, so much, and uh, which I should have known when I prepared this. <laughs> so, uh, especially, for example, the, the last uh, talk, I think what I say is will uh, come into many different areas, and I'll go back and digest everything and try to, <laughs> when I write the, the paper for the proceedings, kind of uh, get everything uh, in there. So thank you very much. So a bit of context, perhaps. Um, the end, it should be with a uh, question mark afterwards, final causes and final causation in Hurtado Mendoza. So I've worked on final causes and final causation in, in Suarez uh, before. So I was happy to get, uh, get this opportunity or pretext to go into Hurtado de Mendoza on, on, on this issue and, and, and look at it. Um, a bit of the background perhaps also to uh, how I came into this uh, topic from this time. I mean, it's, it's a quite common uh, <clears throat> way to distinguish what, what's usually called the early moderns from the scholastic tradition uh, to say that uh, the early moderns reject final causation. Uh, that, that's kind of one of the big differences here. So getting a more nuanced view, more accurate view of the, the, the fate of this notion or concept, uh, I think is set within a larger project of getting a better understanding of, of um, uh, yeah, the development of philosophy uh, during these these times, so this would be be part of that. So, uh, for example, the so-called early moderns, for example, Descartes and and Spinoza. You can see that uh, Spinoza, in his Conatus concept, well, some I, I don't want to go into uh, those uh, those arguments, but some researchers would say that the Conatus concept is kind of full of of uh, f f finality uh, conceptions. Uh, in Descartes, you have the notion that, well, there, are, there, are, there, there is finality in nature, but as we don't know the mind of God, uh, I won't treat it in the physics and so on. So <laughs> you find it there. And also from the other side, of course, you have the Aristotelian tradition broadly construed in the 14th and 15th century uh, development where you see in, internal tensions between, for example, efficient causation and final causation and trying to get these together. So these are just parts of getting more kind of nuanced view of the development. This would be uh, one part of that, that kind of puzzle. Um, so uh, first some, some like f f bigger impressions of coming to Hortada de Mendoza on, on this uh, question. Um, would be looking at, at the work uh, as a whole. One can see that it's set into six uh, different sections. Actually, I've come to realize during these days, when I come from the dis disputations, uh, you think about the Universa Philosophia as a kind of equivalent to disputations, whereas it's not, right? <laughs> it, you have the metaphysical part. It, that's the last part. But just you have the physics part, you have the de anima part, the logic part, and so on before. So uh, there's a question, having been ra raised during these days, in my mind, how to kind of compare, or coming from, from Suarez, how to kind of read Hurtado de Mendoza, it, um, how, so to say, um, to what extent is it really the same context within which they're talking about certain issues, right? And this is uh, evident in, in, in this um, uh, specific case because um, you have the question of the causes in comune in the physics part and you have the question then of uh, uh, causa finalis in the de anima part. So in, in uh, Suarez, these are, of course, treated in like the third or uh, uh, one third of, of the work or one fourth, a quarter is devoted to causes in the disputations. And final causality is, of course, treated within that, that context. And in, in the tradition, um, already in Aristotle, causes are treated both in the physics and in the met metaphysics. And in, uh, so in this tradition, you have these different contexts 
where they're treated. So it's not treated in the metaphysics section, it's treated in the physics section courses in general, uh, and then final courses in the, in the De Anima section. So that's, that's kind of the first uh, thing, or circumstantial <laughs> thing to, uh, to note. Uh, a second thing, uh, more, uh, much more peripheral, and uh, I was happy uh, with Jacob's talk, learning a bit about uh, the, the editions of, um, of, uh, of these works. Uh, you can see in the 1615, Disputaciones Assumulis ad Metaphysicam, uh, this is from the, the index at the end of the book. So normally I wouldn't put too much emphasis on this, but <laughs> since it's, uh, uh, it's such a um, conspicuous feature, I, I just want to bring it out. So here you have um, one item in the, in the ending index, Causa Finalis. In the University of Philosophia, it's been changed to just finis. So the word causalis or causalitas has been removed from the index. Now, I, wouldn't, I don't know how much emphasis to, <laughs> to put on that. Probably, I mean, it's circumstantial, uh, circumstantial, but it's quite conspicuous. So. Um. So let's move to, to the text. <clears throat> um, so this is quotation one. I've numbered them because they were thought to be a handout, but now they're, they're a PowerPoint. So uh, that's why they're, uh, they're numbered. Um, so let's first look at what Hurtado de Mendoza has to say about causes in general. Well, it takes the basic definition from Suarez. Um, uh, Suarez, in his turn, had taken his um, uh, definition of causation really from uh, late 16th century Jesuit commentaries on the physics and the metaphysics where it kind of slowly develops and you have it um, uh, like fully developed in, uh, in, in Suarez and it's, it's, this, it's the exact same as here, causa et principium per se influence esse in aliud. Uh, so um, influences, as Suarez says, just to say a few things about that, influence, influere, is of course uh, not a transitive verb in Latin, but he takes it and, and uses it as a, as a transitive verb, and he says that influencing being into another, uh, which Leibniz later says is, is a clear example of the vulgarity and, and kind of <laughs> lack of intellectuality in, in, the, in the schoolmen. Uh, but he, 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 he knows he uses it. He also says in other places, gives being or communicates being. So he takes influence in this uh, in a sense. Um, there is though also another passage where, um, where Hurtado de Mendoza takes this uh, and adds one small par part, physique, which I at least haven't seen before. Omnis enim causa vel mediate vel imidate physici influit in effectum, non vero principium. So physically influences seems to be a kind of innovation from Hurtado. Now here comes the point, how, how much should we stress that this is within physics, not, not within metaphysics. So it's natural perhaps in physics to say it's, it physically influences being into, into another. Um, as far as I can see, this is the only uh, definition of causation we get, though, in, in the whole of Universa uh, Philosophia. I haven't been able to find anything really in the metaphysics section. And it also treats of the first course in, in this context. So, um, so it takes the basic definition from Suarez, but tra transforms into this way, and perhaps also places it in, in, in a slightly different context. Right, so how about fin uh, final causes? Um, so as you see, this is from the De Anima section then. So as in Suarez, final causes aren't causes in the strict sense. So even though Suarez treats it in, in the uh, in the context of uh, causes and causation, not even for Suarez, it's causes in the strict, strict sense. 
uh, for different reasons. Uh, but I would suggest that Hurtado de Mendoza underscores this point much more vehemently than, than Da Suarez. Um, he's very reluctant to uh, speak of the end, as of course. Uh, so he says, college, causan exemplarum et finalum non esse in regore causas, quia nullum habent in fluxum in effectum. So there you can see kind of the, uh, he's referring to this general notion of causation when he's uh, arguing for this. Neque per se influnt, sed per alias potentias. Um, Und ratio causa eis convenit per analogiam impropriam, ut risus homini et prato. This is actually the exact same example of an improper uh, analogy as uh, Suarez has, this uh, smiling field, <laughs> uh, risus prato. Um, so at the very end he says, ut vero cum vulgo luquamur, Eront etia manovis causa. So he kind of, but he doesn't try to uphold this four cause scheme. I mean, even for Suarez, it's, it's really a stretch. <laughs> but he, he doesn't even try to uphold it, really, I would say. Um, so once again, in, uh, in this context, uh, this word physike um, uh, comes in also. Iam non habere in effectum physicum, uh, physicum et realem in fluxum. So it doesn't have any uh, real and physical influence. And that's, that's why it's not, it's not a real cause. And once again, just to, to stress, overemphasize the point. <laughs> Uh, he says that final causation in no way falls under the definition of causation in general. And he actually even, even comments on this separation, that he treats it, uh, uh, treats it apart from each other. Uh, of course, I mean, that it's, uh, we're talking about metaf metaphorical motion here. You can find that also uh, already in Aristotle. Um, so uh, it's, it's hard just, just by reading uh, particular sentences to, to get what, what's, uh, what's new, because you can, of course, find e almost everything in Aristotle already, as, as they did. Um, but it still says, Unde existimu finem formaliter non est causam realem, neque ili definitionem causa convenire nisi translative. Qua proper eo dispositionem a physicus sum opinatus alienum, so it's, it doesn't fall under the, this um, definition. So one could say that this would be then the end of uh, final causes and final causation, but um, so this was kind of the hard part of uh, the paper or presentation uh, to present that, it, that it's separate and that's quite clear, I think. Now I perhaps come to a bit more speculative and, and a kind of feeling or sense you get when, when you read it. So that's hard to, to explicate, but I, I try my best. So he separates it. So he doesn't have to work with trying to get it under the definition of a cause. And that in, in a way seems to make him more free to emphasize the great role in another sense that the end has for us, but perhaps more to our psychological or spiritual uh, life. Um, so uh, he says, for example, that the end has, so it's not a cause, but it has all the whole causative power. Uh, so secondo probato, quia tota causalitas finis consistit in attractione voluntas ad se, movet enim per suam bonitatem, of course, quis motio consistit in amabilitate, ergo licit finis nullum habet physicum in fluxum, Intelligitur habere totam, totam virtutem eh, causativam, si habeat bonitatem. Actum autum intelligetur causare eo precise, quod termine tamorem rationis suo bonitate sine, sine eh, physicum fluxo. So the, the important part here, I would say, is this totam virtutem causativam. So it's not a cause, but it has all the causative power, the whole causative power even. So it's a, a, a very strong force. So in, in, in that way, that's one of the parts where, where he, 
uh, emphasizes it. Uh, so it's no physical influence going on, and here I think it, it connects to, to, the, uh, to this last talk, which I would uh, like to look more into. I'm sorry, I just have, have a part of this uh, quote, but uh, actum intellectus non influere physici in actum voluntatis neque actus voluntatis in opus externum. So um, there's no physical influence going on. Um, so let's see. Uh, what we have is, um, I think some, to have lost it, but this, these are vital acts. So this is the realm of, of vital acts. So there's no causation going on from, uh, from uh, the end to the will, and then even from uh, the will to the external action. But it's vital acts uh, taking place here. So, uh, there I would have, have to look into a bit more the status of, of, uh, of vital acts. But, but it's clear still that it's totally separate from causality, and as we saw then, causality, uh, um, uh, he says yes to, the, to that modus, but not to, to vital acts. Um, and uh, another part then in, uh, in this quotation eight, uh, and here it's mostly that I, this I haven't found in, in, in Suarez, this um, emphasis that we have to be able to hope that the end can, can come true in order for it to, to have any, any power over us. We can't like, okay, it can never be that way, but I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna do it. So it draws toward a more psychological one could say, perhaps in a more modern sense. Uh, understanding of, of the end. So, hex uh, simplex apprehensius insufficiens ad actus efficis, uh, efficis, um, efficacis finis, nam ad volendum aliquem finem efficaciter, opus est judicio ex estimante talem finem obtinere posse, probator quia no, eh, si non existimus remese possibi, eh, possibilem, non possumus habere spem eh, ilius consequende. Uh, so, we have to hope for it to be able to be, uh, become realized, be true, in order for us to, to, to have it as, as an end. Um, and this, uh, let's see. Uh, this is, in, in comparison to, for example, uh, um, um, Suarez then, having a more technical uh, discussion. Suarez has to be able to show that even though the end is, would be impossible, it, it can still be an end. So that's the reason why he emphasizes that even though you in the 16th century try to square the circle, uh, that it's impossible doesn't like take away a, any of its uh, uh, causative power. Of course, squaring the circle is impossible, though they didn't uh, uh, know that, so um, uh, so that would be a more more kind of from from a more technical and and question of causation uh, point of view. He has to save uh, final causation as a kind of causation, even though the end even would be impossible, and that's why also uh, he says that there's no there's no fundamentally for Suarez there's a real categorical. Uh, if I remember correctly, relation from, from cause to effect. Now, he says the, there can't be a real relation from the end to, to uh, its effect uh, because the end, when it causes, isn't yet real. And for a real relation, you need, uh, real, uh, you need a real foundation. So the only real relation is from the side of, of the will to the end, according to Suarez. Um, but as the end isn't real when it causes, this, ha this relation has to be transcendental, not a categorical. Because it could even be the case that it's not even possible. And for a, for a categorical um, uh, relation, you of course need determinants to be, to be real, whereas that's not, according to Suarez, then um, um, necessary for, for a, a transcendental 
uh, relation. Now then, coming back to, <laughs> to Hurtado de Mendoza, he, he doesn't have that kind of issues. He doesn't have to kind of defend, uh, defend the, the place of uh, final causes within uh, the causes, for example. So he can more uh, emphasize, I would say, this you know, more, more psychological and even saying that it has to be be them possible, and we have to be able to hope, uh, have hope in it. Um, uh, so I don't know whether, so I, this is one part I have to look into, whether this also, uh, how this relates to the, um, uh, the notion of transcendental, uh, the transcendental relation. So this would be, uh, one part where I have to digest what I've heard here and so on. Uh, but the, this um, also leads, I would say, uh, de Mendoza to, to give this very, in a sense, traditional uh, statement regarding uh, cognition uh, in relation to, to will, that in cognition, uh, that which is cognized is in the cognizer, whereas in will, and where love is kind of fundamental form of, of, of the will, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the one who, who loves is in, in the object, rather. Cognitum est in cognoscente, as it ends, et amas in amato. Nice, okay, so I'll, I'll end a bit early, I think. Um, So, uh, even though uh, uh, we don't have causation when, when it comes to the end, uh, this doesn't preclude uh, that it has an immense and fundamental role in, in psychological life for our will, as well as in, in, the, in the spiritual life then, with love. Okay, that's good. So we have eight, eight more minutes, so you can just uh, <laughs> give it as an exercise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can go back. To this. So this would be my, my uh, main points then. Uh, the first more, more um, hard or strict or, uh, uh, point that um, the finality is clearly separated from causation generally in Hurtado de Mendoza. And um, uh, the second point, a bit more vague perhaps, but more of an impression that this in a way frees him, uh, makes him free to, uh, to emphasize uh, its role in, in our uh, psychological and spiritual life, that it has the whole causative power uh, that, um, uh, that we need, uh, it has to be uh, possible, or we need to have hope uh, that that the end can can uh, become real. Then, thank you very much.